I went up to Whitechapel to train to be a dentist, uh, decided I want to uh, really see life, partying, uh, <laughs> drinking far too much and so on. On the verge of a breakdown, someone said to me, well, Jesus changed my life. I thought, you poor boy. You're, you're training to be a doctor, you need to see one. Uh, and then I came across other people who, who said very similar things. And so I started investigating, well, are you up there? And I started reading parts of my Bible, particularly John's Gospel, reading about Jesus. And I would ask these other guys, why do you say your life's been changed? What do you mean? I'd ask them questions. I didn't always get answers, they, they tried their best, but I really was seeking and I knew that if the God of the Bible is real, then it was, it was all or nothing. If he's there, he really demanded my all and needed that. I knelt down two o'clock in the morning, I'd study till two in the morning, and I knelt down and I really surrendered my life to Jesus, which was the, the greatest decision I have ever made and it made the biggest difference to my life uh, of anything else that's happened to me. Right. So what difference did, did, did it make? Well, I think the biggest difference it made was that a very unfulfilled atheist who was seeking to, to really live and, and nothing actually delivered. I was never finding this life I was looking for. But in Christ, uh, I really found that life. The doctor examined me and, um, well, he couldn't really help, sent me to the hospital and the uh, specialist said, you have got IBS. I said, I thought that was a conservative politician. He said, no, it's irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> and I said, what do you do about it? Three tablets a day for the rest, rest of my life. And uh, he used the terrible word incurable. Uh, about six weeks after that, I wasn't really taking the tablets like I should have. I asked him. Christian, I was standing next to him in a prayer meeting, the pain was bad. I said, can you lay your hand on my irritable bowel and pray the power of God might come upon it? Well, he did so. Nothing happened immediately. Uh, two or three weeks later, I realized that I had no more pain. And I can tell you, Stuart, that it's over 20 years now, no more pain, no more tablets in all of that 20 plus years. Yes, the, and financially, um, the practice I bought in Norwich, I could not get financial backing because all the finance people said it's a dead duck was the expression they used. And uh, it was a long time, or well, some time before I could get backing. And then the bank said, we'll give you the loan. There were two houses involved, some equipment, goodwill, but we want you to repay it in 10 years. I said, 10 years? You know, it's a dead duck. Anyway. <laughs> We went in, we prayed, Lord, would you send work? Don't give them a toothache, but just send us work. <laughs> and the patients piled in. I paid the loan off in literally 10 months. And at the end of that year, I added a second surgery, took on another dentist. After another year, another surgery, another dentist. And about eight or nine years later, I was running seven surgeries. Uh, I don't just believe in God, I am totally convinced he's changed my life and looked after me for the last 51 years now.